Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is uh, part six, the final insert into our biomolecules unit, and it's all about enzymes. So today we looked at a little sneak peek at enzymes, and now we're just going to go over the content and make sure that you know it all. So metabolism, basically what it is, is the sum of every chemical reaction that happens in our cell. All these chemical reactions need a specific little uh, jump start to get going, otherwise they take forever. And there's a couple different types of reactions that we can talk about. Anabolic and catabolic. Anabolic means to build it up, and catabolic means to break it down. You can think about it, anabolic steroids, obviously they bulk people up and make the muscles bigger, uh, whereas catabolic when someone's like, like uh, it just means to be uh, breaking it down. Okay, substrate, what this means is the reactants involved. So if we have CO2 and H2O going to form a couple products, these would be our substrates. All right, so what an enzyme actually does uh, is it allows these substrates to react. And the place where they react is in called uh, an active site. So I'm just going to draw an enzyme up here. The active site would be right here. This is where the substrates bind or bond to. Okay, uh, And they do it using a lock and key mechanism which means that the substrate fixes into the active site, but there's only one enzyme for each substrate. So it's specific. Let me just get rid of that so you can see it. So what we call it is when it uh, fits into the active site, it's actually an induced fit. It kind of pushes the active site just squeezes it out a little bit like when you're settling into a nice comfy chair and you push back side to side so you can get in there nice and easily nice and comfortably um, that's what it does and so it's just a slight little shape change so these just kind of push out just a little bit so these are two big vocabulary words lock and key and induced fit so this is what it looks like okay so we have a enzyme which is this here are our substrates or our reactants. What's going to happen is they're going to come into the active site. So I'd label these parts here. And what happens is that this reaction between these two happens right here. There's an intermediate step where they start joining together, and then this is our final product formed. Okay? As you can see, the reactants change into the products. Nothing happens to the enzyme. It's basically a facilitator. It just gives it a spot to allow those reactions to happen. Okay. So this is the opposite. So this is a degradation reaction or catabolism. So this is the uh, breakdown. So same thing. We have an enzyme. We have our active site. We have our substrate that's going to form. But this time, the one compound breaks down into its two uh, reactants. Okay. Same thing. Enzyme isn't broken down. But now we have these brand new products. We're just we're a breakdown from the substrate. Okay. So specific specificity, like I was saying before, lipids only ever get broken down by lipase. Maltose, which is just glucose and glucose together, is broken down by maltase. Lactose is broken down by lactase. So almost all of them have this ASE end ending, which can indicate that it's an enzyme, uh, except for this one, which is found in the stomach. Pepsin that breaks down. Uh, polypeptides, which is basically a protein. So if you had lipase and you put it on maltose, nothing would happen. We're going to do a lab tomorrow, which is going to test some specificity. So how do enzymes actually speed up the reaction? You'll see this a little bit more detail in Chem 12, but it, it pretty much just essentially lowers the activation energy. So activation energy is the amount of energy needed to get the uh, reaction happening. Well, what enzymes do is it just lowers it. So you just need to put in less energy in order to make this reaction happen. That's a very general uh, explanation. And if you're looking for more detail, you see it in Chem 12. So factors that affect the enzyme's activity. Uh, there's lots of things that it can allow an enzyme not to work. Uh, the first big one is uh, substrate. So if you don't have a lot of reactants, uh, the reaction is not going to be happening as fast. Same thing, if you don't have a lot of enzyme or a lot of spots for those substrates to dock, if there's no enzyme around, it's not going to react, react as quickly. Okay. 
So more reactants, more reactions can occur. Next one is temperature. So our enzymes that happen in our body want to be about 35 to 40 degrees. Uh, if you have a lower temperature, just like when you're cold, you kind of get close and bunched in and you start shivering. Same thing with the enzyme, it becomes less flexible. So here is our active site again, where our substrate tries to bind and induce its fit. If it can't push and settle in there, it's not going to be able to work. The next thing is pH. This is probably the most important. Uh, they usually activate around 6 to 8, but something in our stomach, that pepsin, likes it around 1 to 2. So there's a big difference. So what can happen is if the pH is too high or too low, it can denature the protein, which means the enzyme. And what denature means is it causes it to unravel. So if that organized protein unravels into polypeptides uh, it's not going to have any function it's not going to be able to fit that substrate in the active site here and so it's not going to have any function so all of these will reduce the uh, effectiveness of the enzyme the next one is inhibitors an inhibitor basically just means that it's going to stop the enzyme from working you have two types and I'll show them both right now you have a competitive and you have a non-competitive competitive competes for the active site. So if we have an inhibitor that looks like this, it can fit directly in there and if it fits in there, it's going to bind, it's going to stay and so our actual substrate, so we'll say this is an inhibitor, this is a substrate, the actual substrate that wants to get in there can't because it's blocked. So how this results, if the substrate can't get in, it can't have a reaction, therefore the enzyme does not work. Okay, Non-competitive still has the enzyme not functioning but instead of uh, it competing for the active site, so remember this is the active site, we have a competitor, or an inhibitor, sorry, that binds right here. And it's called an allosteric site. And what the allosteric site does when it's plugged is it causes a shape change. And now that enzyme, or the, sorry, that substrate that normally was going to fit in there can't fit because it's not the right shape anymore. And if it's not the right shape, it's not going to allow the enzyme to uh, be able to work because it can't fit in there. So no enzyme activity or no chemical reaction. So both of these cause reactions not to work. There are a couple of factors that actually increase it, and they're called increase the activity, and they're called cofactors. They basically have the same impact on the enzyme as allosteric or as uh, competitive and non-competitive inhibitors, except this is a positive. So the same thing, we have that allosteric sh uh, shape. So this active site was this kind of square shape, but our substrate that we want is circular. So what happens is when this uh, cofactor plugs the allosteric site, it causes a shape change again, but this shape change is for the better. So now our substrate can fit in and our chemical reaction can happen. So there's two types. There's organic and non-organic. Our organic ones are called vitamins, or also we have heme and flavin. And then our non-organic ones are metal ions, so uh, magnesium, copper, and manganese. So all of these ones are going to cause the enzyme to work better because they change the active site to better suit the shape of the substrate we're looking for. Okay, so hopefully that helps. So hopefully that helps, and if you have any questions, we're going to go over this in a lot of detail tomorrow. Have a super night.